GitHub Copilot is an AI pair programmer that doesn't spill food all over your keyboard or licks your mouse when you're not there. Yeah, that could be a thing. Today I'm gonna put it through its paces and see if it delivers what they promise. In short, it's pretty impressive, but I also have a few concerns. Let's dive in. What the? If you're new here, you want to become a better software developer, gain a deeper understanding of programming in general, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. Last month, GitHub introduced Copilot. They call it an AI pair programmer that helps you write code faster and with less work. I like that because I'm a lazy bastard. It's available as an extension to VS Code. You can go to the extension section in VS Code and then you can install it there. After installing, you still need to authorize it though because you need to be part of the technical preview in order to use it. I'll put a link in the description below that you can click on if you want to join the waitlist. You'll see it in a minute, but using this is pretty straightforward. When you type in your code editor, it simply automatically suggests code. If you want to add that to your own code, you press tab and then it gets inserted. It integrates really well with VS Code. It does its job and then it doesn't get in the way. You can really see that they thought about this. So let's try a few things. First thing I'm going to try is the basic example that Copilot actually gives us that we can play around with. I'm going to create a function to compute the number of days between dates. Now you see that Copilot is already suggesting something to us. Actually using this is pretty straightforward. If I just want to accept this suggestion that it just made, I just press tab and then I have to code. Now there's some issues because obviously I didn't import date time or anything and uh, PyLance is actually complaining about missing types. But in principle, if you look at the code, this, this looks fine. Let me delete this and let's look at a few other options. So here's one option, but you can press on Mac option and then the square brackets to navigate between options. And on Windows machines it's or Linux, it's Alt. So let's see. So you see we get a few different versions of this that we can try. If this is not enough, you can press Control Enter, and then it's going to create a number of different solutions for you that you can choose from. So let's see. Well, let's accept this one, and then it puts it in here. Let's try another one. I'm going to add a function to compute the moving average. And that's going to need a, well, that's actually what it's going to need. It needs a value and a window. So you see that just from the name of the function, it determines what it needs. In this case, a list of values and a window. And then it simply generates the code for you, just like that. I think that's pretty incredible. Let's try this again and see what kinds of different options we have. There's this one. This is a much shorter one that uses, I guess, NumPy. And then we have a few other ones that we can choose from. So let's change this to something slightly different. Let's say we're going to compute the exponential moving average. If you're in trading, you probably know what this kind of stuff is. Ah, there we are. So now it computes an exponential moving average. And looking at the code, that looks fine to me. There's a few more other options. Whoa, what's this? <laughs> okay, what else do we have? Okay, this makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do like this one, actually. So you see, in some cases, it breaks down. Now let's try something a little bit more complicated. Let's create a class employee and see what it comes up with. So first suggestion is some kind of initializer. Makes sense. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay, a couple of methods that might be useful. So let's go with this one. So sometimes it also generates code that doesn't compile. So for example, here for determining what the email address is, there is some stuff missing. So it's not complete. Now let's try something else and see if it can deal with that as well. I'm going to turn employee into a data class. I'll remove this originally suggested code. I'm going to add a data class decorator here, and then let's see what it's suggesting to me now. So now I get attributes that make sense in a data class setting. So let's go for name and ID. Sounds good. 
And what you can do now is add more. So oh, it suggests a department, a job title, a manager, that's another employee, who you report to, your email, phone, I am, extension, physical address, postal address, other, pager, pager, are people still using that? Fax, okay, why not? Welcome to the 90s, title, car license. Man, employers really need a lot of information about you as an employee. Employee number, business unit, job code. So it's basically generating all these attributes for you that might or might not be useful. And at some point, it will start to break up and you'll see that will happen now because now it lets you define a job category. Now there's a subcategory, but if you go on, it just continues creating sub, 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 sub categories. Sometimes the algorithm just runs out of new suggestions to give to you and then this is what happens. Let's look at something a bit different now. A while ago, I did a video about the factory design pattern and it had a video exporter class with subclasses of varying quality levels. It had an audio exporter class, also with specific subclasses. And there's a factory that can create video and audio exporters for you. And I made a few like fast exporter, high quality exporter, master quality exporter. And let's see what happens if we add another class here. Let's call, uh, let's try a low quality exporter. What the? So it just generated the entire class. Include, and, and it actually makes sense because it's, it used the lower quality video export and the lower quality audio export for this low quality export. So let's try an extreme quality and see what it does then. <laughs> oh my God, oh, this is incredible. On some level, it actually seems to understand what the context is of the thing that you're trying to create. I'm impressed. Now let's try some other stuff. What happens if I type this? Ah. Okay, that's it. Not bad. And how about this one? Close that. Okay, so I just got a few connection strings here. Let me try another one. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. And how about this? Oh, what's this? Oh, here you'll see an example of where it just starts to break down. Um, and these are the only two options. Others. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure. It's a, it generates a bunch of keys here. I'm, I'm not sure these are actually valid. I, I guess they're, they're not valid. They're just kind of mixed up from other API keys that happen to be in the repositories, which still feels kind of dangerous, though. Let's try one more thing. Yeah, so here we get kind of the same thing. Yeah, so they definitely put some time into making sure that you're not getting random private keys from other people or something. Overall, I'm quite impressed. I found Copilot quite useful in suggesting solutions to common software problems. And I can imagine that as the tool gets better, this is gonna save developers quite a lot of time. This is not gonna put you out of a job or make my channel obsolete. You still need to think about the structure of your software and how to organize everything. I wrote a guide to help you with this. You can get it for free at ariancodes.com slash design guide. It describes the seven steps that I take when I design a new software application or a new feature, and perhaps it helps you structure your thoughts as well. So ariancodes.com slash design guide. Now I have a few concerns about GitHub Copilot. The first concern is a legal concern. Others have mentioned this as well. I'm, I'm not a legal expert, so I won't spend too much time here, but GitHub trained the model on publicly available code in GitHub. So they're allowed to do that under their own terms and conditions. The issue is that a lot of that code is under a copy left license. That means that if you wanna use that code, you need to attribute the original owner and release it under the same conditions. And that often doesn't make it suitable for commercial use. So what happens when 
GitHub suggests a copy of that code to you via Copilot. Can you then use it commercially? I don't know, some people have called this open source software laundering for commercial use. Now GitHub says that they mostly generate original code. In about 0.1% of the cases, according to their own research, it's actually a copy of existing code. But if it's being used by millions of developers, then 0.1% is still a lot. And there have been several examples online of code that was clearly copied, even containing some of the comments in the original code. So in the end, I think when you use a system like Copilot, you have to be careful. When you see code that looks like it's clearly copied, perhaps you shouldn't use it. Now, second concern I have is a quality concern. Copilot is based on code that's in public GitHub repositories. Now, not all of those repositories contain high quality code. In general, I'd say the code quality is average in repositories on GitHub. If developers simply accept these code suggestions and not check whether it's good quality code or whether the code is actually doing what it's supposed to do, then that can lead to a spiral of decreasing code quality. Because the generated code is committed again and perhaps is used again by the algorithm to suggest it to others. It's a bit similar to what's happening on social networks where people start living in certain bubbles of misinformation. So a similar thing can happen here and that's really concerning to me. Of course, on some level, this also happens on Stack Overflow, where people are just copy pasting code without really checking what it does. But at least there is still some community aspect to it that checks whether the answers are of high quality. With Copilot, you're basically on your own. It's also not clear to me how Copilot deals with quality. Does it have quality metrics that integrate with it that check which code is of high quality and which isn't? Perhaps it uses the suggestions that you choose when you use Copilot to suggest those things also to other developers. But even that doesn't necessarily solve this spiral of decreasing code quality that I mentioned before. And then there are potential security concerns. Now, lots of repositories still contain sensitive information like database credentials, API keys and secrets, passwords, and so on. GitHub trained this on public repositories, so it should be less of a problem. And if it's in there, then it's already compromised. But perhaps in the future, GitHub is going to expand how they train the model by also looking at private repositories. We don't know that. They're allowed to do that under their terms and conditions. It just shows that it's really important that if you have sensitive information like database credentials, etc., don't put them in your repository. Put them in environment variables and set those environment variables when you deploy your service. And another thing that I was thinking about, is it possible that a bad actor of some sort finds a loophole in the co-pilot algorithm and is able to commit a certain type of code that the algorithm then starts suggesting to other developers? This opens up a whole new avenue for hackers to get into places where they're not supposed to be. Maybe this is all just academic and it's not going to be an issue, but given what happened in the past, I'm not so sure. Overall, this is an interesting new direction for software development. I'm not gonna uninstall it yet, but play around with it a bit more, see how it feels when I use this for a longer period of time. Do you see yourself using Copilot as part of your development process? Would you pay for it? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you next time.